how world breeding mechanics have been data mined and there's now tools for you to figure out your own breeding chains to obtain any pal in the game through breeding that is not a legendary pal. This is going to be insane. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like, share with your friends, comment your thoughts down below. We are almost there for a full guide. So once we have this understanding, it's really going to come down to base building, optimization, and then getting a good breeding flow. So what happened? How does breeding work? The way breeding works is rather simple. Each pal has a hidden breeding power number between 10 and 1500. The lower the number, the more rare or powerful the pal is. The breeding power of both parents is averaged to determine the baby egg's power. Simplified, you add both parents' power and one, divide that in half, and then round it to the nearest whole number, and that's how we get stuff like this. Also, it creates crazier breeding chains. The game then picks the pal with the closest power to that average. As an example, if the baby power ends up being 1015, the closest values are Felbat and Robin Quill, the baby will be Robin Quill. Tiebreaker just comes down to which pal comes first in the game's file index. In this case, Robin Quill comes first. The way this works means you can never breed a pal more strong or rare than your strongest parent. For example, if your starting parents are Anubis and Kativa, the result will be Robin Quill, and then you can do all this stuff back into the Anubis for an Arsox, and then you will eventually only get Anubis. Gender doesn't matter. When Pal World first came out, it seemed like gender mattered. That's what a lot of people were reporting, but it turns out, nope, gender doesn't matter because that's how the power level works. Odds of Pal being male or female differ between some of the Pals. All Pals have an equal chance to be male or female, except for these exceptions, which as Pokemon fans know, can lead to problems, but the problems are going to be worse in Pal World because, oh, if I need a male Lovander that also has the right passive skills, your odds get lower for that. There's also 28 special combinations that do not use breeding power to determine the result. These Pals can only be bred using these exact combinations and will not show up through normal breeding or with any other combos. So actually, getting the hybrids and subspecies is not Incineram plus Dark equals Incineram Noct. No, you need Incineram plus Merwraith to get Incineram Noct, and that's also where we get into Frostallion. Frostallion and Hellzephyr is how you get Frostallion Noct. Additionally, only five other pals can be born from two parents of the same type, so we have the four legendaries and then Jormantide Ignis, which makes sense because Jormantide Ignis has a four fire making. Now this post dropped right before I made my last breeding video and there has been updates and we have the biggest one probably right here, added a parent search tab that lets you select your desired child pal and show all valid parent combinations to create it. And that's what this is right here. The initial drop was this, where like, oh, you kind of had to search and cross-reference, and you can also see what breeds out of other pals. So if you have a Chillit, Chillit plus Lambal equals Rush Ore, and then Kativa is going to be Rush Ore because that's how the averaging is. And then we can see how the breeding works and the parent interactions, and then there's some crazy stuff like Nox and Chillit make Verdash. Okay, you can also get a Felbat and a Kitsun. So Chillit has a high rarity, it seems. And then another update showing the parent search, so you can select a desired child pal, select one parent, and it will show you what the second parent is needed to get to the desired child. Just use your good passive parents as the first parent, select the child you want to pass those passives on to, and it will show you the secondary parent you need to get the guaranteed other child. The complication begins, and then actually it gets even better because we have data mine stats, so now this is just going to be the ultimate spreadsheet for everything pal world which means we can go over here and see yeah um now we have all the stats all the numbers all that fun stuff and there's some interesting ones for breeding because we have capriti and melpaca being better value than something like the verdash which is how chill it could create a verdash and then uh lunaris is up here which is probably why some people are reporting like yeah i just bred some random things i got lunaris early on even though it's like a not standard spawn and Relaxorus having a really low value. So if you get access to that fairly early on, it's going to open up breeding into some really powerful pals. Bro, Nightwing and Relaxorus gives you Quivern. Also, it's worth noting that breeding doesn't unlock until level 19, and there's still some pretty significant gates around then, because Baking Cake 
is really slow, especially with like a level one or two fire making pal. So you can maybe use the Gigasphere to get higher rarity pals easier to then switch into your breeding, but it's also not something that you need to rush or that becomes immediately available. So you don't really have to worry about optimizing your pal rarity until level 19, but then it gets meta. And then you can find missing parents. So what if I do have a Relaxorus? What do I need? Broncherry, Celeray, Raindrix, and Digtoys. Those will result in an Anubis. And then there's a breeding calculator to play around with that also has the breeding parent one with offspring. So if you breed Sweepa with Wumbo Botan, that's going to give you Sibilix. And then that's just going to kind of keep going down. So then you end up with Mossanda until you get into a Nightwing loop where Nightwing plus Sweepa gives you Nightwing. And you can use this to find all of the parent combinations for every pal. And if you're missing one of those, well then, yeah, that's how you can reverse it. Okay, Rush is a bad example. I just clicked a random one. I want Reptyro. Three mining, three fire. How do I get that? Okay, so we got Pen King, Cryolix, and Frostalion, and some other ones. And here's where we have our good friend Relaxorus holding it down. So that means we need a Pyron. And then Pyron is going to be Mamorist Sweepa. Mostly like Mamoris is going to be the similar one to Relaxorus to where, yeah, you can get it kind of early-ish on depending on how it's comparing to those other pals. So Grizzbolt and Ping King do it, which is interesting because they're both in the Nature Preserve area and they're not super high level. So if you want to do criminal activity early on and get a Grizzbolt, that's also going to carry a lot of your breeding. Because Grizzbolt is way up here. And then I think this gets even more complex. It's like, okay, but what areas do you go to to get eggs that also just kind of give you easy access to the rare species that's not going to be level gated by finding the wild eggs? And I think it goes both ways because finding surprisingly rare pals also shows surprisingly not rare pals where Anubis at 570, like Serpent, has a lower value, and then there's also some other ones like Pain King and Grintail, which means you can hone in on an Anubis early on, which is why people were discovering those kinds of chains. So yeah, Relaxorus or Grizzbolt is going to hit all of these mid-tier ones that you could be looking for. And then another update for a web-based project to accomplish all of this stuff. My goodness. So yeah, as you can see, the breeding guide is going to take some work. Also finding like all of the meta strategies for getting early breeding pal combinations, that's going to need its own development. How fast can you just get to Grizzbolt? Or is there a rare pal on the first black market trader that like super turbos your breeding if you just spend all of your money on it? Maybe that's the secret. You don't use the black market trader to get overpriced on a seemingly common pal. You use it to get a pal that has a high breeding value. Is it worth choosing an early Relaxorus or Mamorist? And like I said, once we find out everything about the overworld egg locations, that gets even crazier. So comment your thoughts, tips, tricks, interactions with all this stuff down below so we can really figure things out and do like some crazy tech with Pal World Breeding. But I hope you guys enjoy the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.